how did I, you know, wake up? My question was, why am I Jewish? That was the constant question of my mind, because I went to a school, a public school with all kinds of souls, not, not all kinds of humans, not just Jews, everyone was there. And that kind of openness, that experience that I had growing up with every kind of person that exists, you know, there were refugees in this school and it was a very public, you know, open school and quite rough as well. And it gave me the ability to see all kinds of people. So when I started slowly getting connected to Jews, my question was, why am I being drawn to Jews when the majority of the people I grew up with are not Jewish? Welcome to the pod. Yeah, so we had uh, quite a bit of talk before, but we're really, really excited to introduce. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to go with your full name because Rav Arush also says the importance of names sometimes. So Eliezer Goldsmith, um, who is a... It's actually Eliyahu Eliezer. Eliyahu Eliezer. Yeah. Wow, Eliyahu Eliezer. That's from Rav Dessler, no? Yeah, it's Gumatcha Shinayin, Mehirin, Shinayin. So there's deep, deep things going on over there with my name. Yeah. So yeah. we have with us Eli- Eliyahu Eliezer Goldsmith, who uh, is the yeah. online figure pushing Breast of Israel and uh, Breast of English um, and uh, Muna classes with Rav Arush with different guests a few different podcasts and a bunch of social media accounts from LinkedIn to Facebook to Instagram, Twitter, everything out there um, in order to inspire and to unify souls. I think that's the main uh, name of your, of your entity is, is unity and unified souls. And we're really, really happy to have you. United, souls, yeah. United souls. And also a man. Yeah. Thank you. You manage also. Uh... Yes. Yeah, so I, I was managing this in black in, uh, for about a year and a half, but uh, thank God we have a very good manager now who, who takes that responsibility on. I have the merit to do booking, unity bookings for Nissan Black and a long list of artists and speakers, um, including booking, people like Mordechai Ben Avram and Ravorish and, and then many well-known musicians. Yeah. And we would like to be doing events, but this Corona thing yeah. sort of got in the way. We were planning a lot for this summer that there was, um, right now, I, it caused me to change my focus to more online and less, you know, in-person events. And that focus change has actually been quite rewarding. So we can talk about that. You know? Yeah. What does the future look like for the events? Like since you're talking about the COVID and, and how that changes actually. Okay. Is- so, so the blessing was that we were already building a studio in Ship the Israel in uh, by Brez of Israel with Ravarish. We were building one and it literally got finished. And we're talking about months and months of building. And I would go up on the roof and have like uh, Zoom chats with different people around the world and or, or conversations to get out of the office, just be on this beautiful roof in Yushalayan. And they were building this studio on this roof. And it got completed last year um, just before Pesach, just after Purim. So we had the opportunity to really connect and it was amazing like to be able to begin my personal classes in the studio as the Corona challenge kicked off as tragic as it's been. But at the, the positive side was we had the refuah, we had the key for our program that we could start putting out good content from our studio in Jerusalem with the green screens and all the professional equipment. And it's been amazing. And this summer, was when we started the classes with Rav Shalom Arush. He asked, he specifically requested that he's ready now to come in the studio, everything was starting to work. And we've had 31 classes already on a weekly level starting on Tuesday. Now it's on Sunday at 8.30 p.m. and 1.30 New York time. And, you know, it's been a global uh, class and thank God the, the guests who've come um, have been very, you know, large selection. A lot of them, are a collection of people that I've been working with over the years, personally. So it was already just like a natural flow to come bring them into the studio. Um, and it's also created new relationships. Like um, like I said, with Eight and Cats coming this Sunday will be our 32nd class. That will be my opportunity to really host him on a music level. I've met him in Shul and, you know, I've seen him and, you know, do beautiful music projects, but I never actually did any any uh, music or, or online work of him. So the way I would explain how we shifted is bringing the music world online more, like into the streaming space. I put out two uh, United Soul collaboration albums and also put out an EP 
for the ladies, uh, for Colisha, it's United Souls Key. Um, I haven't made such a public noise about that one yet because of, you know, I'm, I like to stay away from controversy. It's all about unity. Um, but thank God we have that and it's available on, on Spotify and all the uh, audio platforms. And so that was a big change. Instead of doing a large unity event of all these other lists of artists, so my father, who's been in the music business since the 60s, said, why don't you make a, a collaboration album with all these artists since they can't tour? They're more available anyway. And that's what we did. And so with the Studio Weekly and with the online um, streaming album and albums, and also uh, personally, I've really been working hard on my podcast. And thank God I've seen some you know, fruits come out from that. Some other people were inspired in the... Jewish world to begin their own podcast after listening to mine and using the Anchor app. <laughs> you know, I wonder. Amazing. Who are you talking <laughs> about? <laughs> no, I don't know if you guys. Um, yeah, I, 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 I definitely didn't... was. I'm a very inspired by everything you're doing yeah. online, um, especially specifically you. what you're doing with Rav Because if a tzaddik can take time out of his week every day to sit down and to uh, get online and get in front of a camera and to speak, then Kalva Homer, someone who's already on social media um, and already on these platforms, then we should also be, you know, like yeah. if you have a voice, you got to put it out there a bit. Yeah, all well, the more so, exactly. So, to so say Rav Orish, for example, um, you know, having the merit to work with him since 2018, um, honestly, like, I can't, it's sort of beyond words, but at the same time, it was a progression because I was working with Nissan Black, which was a progression from previous projects, but being a, a manager of Nissan and the Brest of Olam noticed me, you know, like who's this guy running Nissan Black's online presence and shows. And it was a very successful time period. Then we did a lot of big, big performances and traveled a lot. Um, but I was finding it a little bit too much for my Shalom Bayat, you know, being out of the country, like almost the whole month and, um, running you know everything literally like social media what would go on instagram to, all the way to in to the bookings to the accountant to everything it was like uh it, it was too much for one person so um, i had a conversation with this in the meanwhile Reza Vizar reached out to me and said you know we'd we'd love you know to see if you'd be the new english director and i had a meeting with them and they they said, yeah, you, you're the man. And, and then it was a while of negotiation, you know how it goes with these things. You don't just say yes straight away. And my rabbis who I speak to, the Tolna Rebbe, um, once I got the bracha from him, the blessing from him, that, you know, I could go and work with Breslov. You know, he's Chernobyl, Breslov, you know, like I just want to double check. So, and he basically said, for sure, you, you know, it's a, it's a big honor and, you know, all the technical stuff we've worked out. And I came on tour with Rav Orish. I organized the three week tour and that was amazing. Like spending three weeks nonstop with Rav Shalom Orish. And at that time it was Rav Lazer Brody as well. And also the rest of the staff there and all the friends of Brez of Israel. So then someone like Gedalia who had already had connection with through online, suddenly I was able to stay in his house and really start to connect with him, you know, in person. And, you know, I'd already met the, the lighthouse project, Michael Ben Melech. That's another special I light. That's the neighborhood. And yeah, I met him. So the truth was, I think what really laid the foundation was Nissan Black managed to do the impossible, which many other breast of it had failed. Um, and I'm talking about big breast of us in Emesh Sharim and other very well known special breast of us. They, you know, we're talking, Sadiqim, people that you've mentioned on your podcast, were trying to get me to go to Uman for like, say, around. 15 years or so and I'm not going to go into all the specifics why I hadn't been, hadn't made the trip but it just uh it needed someone like Nissan Black to make it happen and in Elo there's a picture of us holding the two the tickets and that was it and then my first trip there was really where I met everybody and that really opened up the doors to Breslov for me I mean I always had a connection to Rabbi Nachman but to meet all the personalities and the intensity of Uman you know, what goes on there and see that. And at that time I was managing this. And so 
you know, to bring them on stage and the massive events that go on. I don't know if you've been there. You know, I haven't yet. Like, but... I really, I like, I also personally, I was, uh, you haven't been to Uman? I haven't been to Uman and personally, what? I was very, well, I cannot say much. I was in 670. Yeah. I, I was very like, uh, not, yeah. not about it. And, um, and lately, the more aggressive I've been learning, the more I've opened up to it. And then this year, I would have been the probably the first year that I would have gone. Not for Rosh Hashanah. I'm still not there yet. For Chagim, I want to be in Eretz Yisrael. Yeah. But I would still want to go to the Tzion. Yeah. And then all of this uh, lockdown stuff happened. So I haven't been able to go. But um, I, yeah. I, just, I see what goes on there. I'm connected to all the people that go there. I have the crazy stories that come back. You just added yeah. another one that technically, according to what you just said, once you went to the Tzadik, everything opened up for you. So, uh, wow. uh, well, in terms of like my connection to more Sadiqim and special people, it was an amazing network. I mean, it's like everybody, you know, I, was, I got close with Shiners people, and then there's, there's just so many amazing people there that I got to speak to and connect with, and I'm still friends until this day. And it's, you know, still the momentum. My, some of my best friends have been going for years, like my best, best friends from coming since I came to Israel. But you have to give, I have to give context because. I grew up in, you know, secular North London, and I was involved with the biggest events on earth. Like I grew up as a young boy at Live Aid in the Royal Box, and seeing thousands and thousands of people in events was very normal for my like yearly calendar. Like I'd for sure be at a Wembley Stadium event at least a few times a year at Wembley Arena and see these humongous events and. You know, my family were involved with music, were involved in entertainment. So the wrestling industry, WWF or E, as they call it now, was also a big part of my upbringing. And yeah, just, you know, I grew up like meeting, you know, all the greats in the music business and the wrestling world. And, you know, Macho Man Savage was a good friend of my dad. You know, like my dad discovered his Judaism for him. You know, it's like crazy stories I have gone forever, but we're not going to go into all that now. But just yeah, having that whole upbringing and then coming to Israel, I wasn't a wrestler, but I was called the Xbox Rebbe by a yeshiva <laughs> called Netzer, which I live right next to right now. And the reason was because I used to play the Xbox, but some people thought it's because I was an Xboxer, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> but it wasn't, it was because of the Different Xbox. Different type of boxer. <laughs> um, but anyway, so yeah, we used to, it was a good way of keeping the guys off the streets. And when I, I went from the Xbox rab, rabbi to the Midnight Rabbi, that was the other yeshiva, Neyakov, which I was also working at. I go after Netzach, after being there from like 10 to one in the morning, I go to Ne'er Jake till like four in the morning and the boys there call me the Midnight Rabbi and that name stuck online as well. Instagram and, uh, uh, midnight uh, inspiration. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I keep it because it just, it, for me, it demonstrates the years of where I was truly devoted to the, at, uh, you know, teenage at risk world i was there on the streets with them and i made events for them and i was totally dedicated and it inspires me honestly that my wife was able to put up with it in those formative years of you know we had lots of babies in the house and i wasn't around i was like literally up all night and the rest of the day i was by rfc my zilberberg in his collar and davening with him for hours and by the color Rebbe. and uh, i literally wasn't at home <laughs> other than to nap for a little bit and when I brought all the Bachim around for like big Shabbos and, you know, it was a crazy few years. And, you know, right now I'm paying back my wife by dedicating <laughs> much more time to her. And thank God to the Corona challenge that I can be at home more. You know, I haven't traveled since um, before Purim and last year. And it's amazing. I just thank God, like Hashem's really given me the opportunity. Like, Shala Sudas for me, I had to be by a Sadiq. There was no choice. But this whole year, I've pretty much been at home and focused on my wife and and children and and hopefully that's been good for them <laughs> you know, at one point it was like better he's out of the house like go go to the river go you'll become a better person <laughs> but now it's around. like you know, now now we appreciate a little bit at home so <laughs> it's a good it's a good switcheroo but you know i've, I've gone through a lot in the in the about tuba world i've worked for derek and melech and if you remember that place and you know and uh I was I worked for many yeshivas and thank God um, Neve Sion was one of the craziest because I'd go there all night. How was I'd that get transition? the last bus? Huh? <laughs> you because you were doing all these things right before, like the managing and like all the mainstream and the oh, so this all, no, the managing the musician stuff was 
came more afterwards. Like no, he's when I was working like in the secular. bear. Yeah, so when you were Night, secular, yeah, before doing club. Oh, seculars. When I was secular, I was running nightclubs and I was had my crew of musicians and friends and poets and it was really cool. We we're very expressive and how did I, you know, wake up? My question was, why am I Jewish? That was the constant question of my mind because I went to a school, a public school with all kinds of souls, not, not all kinds of humans, not just Jews. Everyone was there. And that kind of openness, that experience that I had growing up with every kind of person that exists, you know, there were refugees in this school and it was a very public, you know, open school and quite rough as well. And it gave me the ability to see all kinds of people. So when I started slowly getting connected to Jews, my question was, why am I being drawn to Jews when majority of the people I grew up with are not Jewish? Why did I keep finding myself dating Jewish girls or you know, when I came to Israel, what does it mean to be Jewish? You know, that like the birthright kind of concept. You know, I, I came myself. I, I was awakened. My soul was awakening. And uh, through music and through expression and connecting with souls, I was already waking up at the age of 17, 18. And by the time of university, I was, I was still in, I was in university, but I was really still back here in Israel because I'd already been there before. And I never really settled into university. I was, I was just a matter of time until I came back to Yeshiva and uh, had that experience, thank God, of being in Yeshiva and thank God by 21, marrying my soulmate. And it was just very big divine providence constantly revealing itself. Like my first date was my wife. A lot of people go through a lot of struggle in that area, you know. Um, Hashem was very kind to me. I had... My wife, I was living in Yushalayim. I'm living again in Yushalayim, right next to where I started, which was in Um, I'm five minutes from there and five minutes from Rav Oresh and five minutes from, you know, Meir Sharim and five minutes from the Tolna Rebbe. You know, it's, I don't, during this whole year, I, I'm surrounded by everything I need, you know. And uh, I don't really have to, even when there was a limitation on going further than a thousand meters or whatever it was, everything was less so i was i was sorted i didn't have to break any rules and i was able to you know run the studio and thank god we ha i was in my office the whole this whole year and you just you see how hashem does this kindness all the time this divine shepherd that comes into your life you know to be able to uh, to be able to live in yushalayim and to in the holiest city and be connected so when i connect to ravorish to get back to that story um, and I was on those three weeks of him and again another year and all the info you know there's a lot of logistics that go into organizing tours and I thank God being with Nissan before um, and still with Nissan you know we're, we're always looking for new bookings for Nissan Black and all the artists um, the logistics you start to get you know the contracts and this and that so you don't have to use contracts with Avorish it's more like a you know it's more of a connection than a contract but um it's just amazing having the opportunity to meet all these key people in different communities and they want to host Ravorish. So now this whole year, like I, we're, we're connecting to them through Zoom. Like we had a Toronto Zoom um, experience on through the live feed, through YouTube, through Instagram, through Facebook. And, you know, they were on Zoom. We had some people on Zoom as well. Um, we use more Zoom as more just the, you know, way of actually connecting to the person that we wanted to speak to rather than making it interactive so much because the live feed gives an opportunity for people to to talk, you know, to message us, to DM and and to leave their connection. And the whole thing of having meetings with the Rav, you know, I was blessed to be in many, many meetings on these tours with Rav Boris and to see the way he inspires these souls. You know, we're talking about like when we were in Houston, majority of the people that came to the meetings and had to pay to have these meetings. It's, it costs money, but that's, you know, it's a pigeon nefesh. It goes to Zadaka. And I was responsible for all this stuff going on. And I was looking at these people in this meeting. They were like, you know, real, like, not Jewish people. Like, they, I don't want to say, like, the terminology. So, you know, I have to be careful how you speak online. But they were very far away from, from the normal crowds that we usually get, like in New York or Miami. It was people who had literally driven 10 hours to come meet with the Rav and pay for it. And what was their burning question? Their burning question was, how do I connect to God more? How do I do this 
this holy thing you wow. talk about, Rav Voresh, called Espodolus. I'm trying it. I'm reading all your books. I'm, you know, I'm not Jewish, but I want to connect to God like the way you're teaching. And that was, that's the point. So when you're with Rav Oresh and you see how he's able, and this has always been his way from what I've heard and seen. And he's always been into Simcha and smiling, his whole essence. We've got a beautiful picture of him when he was, you know, just, just uh, out of the army and he was smiling, you know. So he, he was always into picking up people, but this Ritzonus to bring this will, to bring a Muna global, this is something which he, it, he is most anaphish with his whole being for. And even before the corona thing, he was always traveling around the country and was always traveling around the world to, you know, there's, there's videos of him with thousands and thousands of, of South African, you know, uh, colored people, thousands. And they wanted to come. They were trying to reach out to me before this whole thing happened. And we were meant to go on a trip to South Africa, not just for the Jewish community, but for them. They want to host, or Colum Colombia, there's a whole non-Jewish community and Texas, whole non-Jewish community. The world wanted to connect to this light of Amun and still does. As, and as Rav, it's a growing phenomenon. Um, obviously, yeah. Has the Rav ever like explained to you outright um, what his Ashkafa is when it comes to, I know he has universal Ghana and Muna, like the universal for like yeah. Allah, for, for everyone in the world can read the Garden of Emuna. Um, but has he ever like expressed to you outright what his Kesher is to this whole idea of reaching out not only to Jews, religious and non religious Jews, but to Africans, to South Americans, to people all over the world that are not at all Jewish, not at all connected to Torah mitzvah? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I've had the pleasure to see the, the constant influx of non-Jewish people to our channels and had many discussions with them and, you know, and the B'nai Noah world. And it, it's an amazing phenomenon. And what I would say from Rabbi Orish himself is that Amuna, as you said, is universal. It's something which he said to us, it's a universal thing. It's a universal truth that's relevant for everybody, not just Jewish people, it's totally uh, for humanity. Everyone needs a Muna. He said it many, many times. And he proved it, for example, in the recovery center, because not everyone there was Jewish. Um, I think majority were, because it worked out, that's the ones who, who worked out to be there. But the ability to give over that universal message of, for the recovery world, it needs that belief in the absolute power. That's the foundation. So. Rav Oresh was able to, in many scenarios, able to talk to people's soul. That was the point. That he's, he's giving them tools that they can have more connection with their godly soul in a, in a real practical way. And that's what he often would say, that you have all my books, learn my books and apply them and you have the guides you need. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's not normal the amount of books we sold on these trips. We're talking about each person would walk in, would walk out with 10 books minimum. I've it was like it, thousands of books that I've never seen. Like, I, I really feel it also when you read. Yeah, and, and I, I wasn't like, like you. Yeah, I could talk to you. Yeah, and really you know, I'm, I, I, I personally found the books like when I was on my journey. Like I started off in Osamer, I was already reading the Garden of Amuna then over twenty years ago, and I was you know rocking out to Yosef Kaduna, who at that time was one of the only few Jewish musicians I could relate to, coming from you know the greatest of the greats, you know, like growing up with Queen and, you know, you know, the biggest bands in the history, Rolling Stones and everyone you can imagine, you know, like I've got stories how we got music equipment donated to Yeshiva because of my family's connection to Led Zeppelin when they made the reunion concert. That's cool. Like, so yeah, to try to bring... Take a neat thought and elevate it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, to try to bring like Jewish, you know, music to someone who's so attuned to such quality music and the level at that time you know it wasn't where it's at now thank god and that was for me a very big drive how can we get music to a new level and thank god ravorish thank god again i'm working with him now and after all these years of trying to push music in the jewish world to get to a high level and work with high level musicians and promote them and push them and encourage them ravorish has now said to us I want you guys to come to my studio and I want, he gets so happy. He says, it's such a surprise every time you guys come to my studio. And he gets, Ellie, you brought me another surprise. He said it this week. He gets so happy because he says himself that the power of music to, 
to help people do tshuva, to help people connect to a munna is huge. I call it a munna music now, thanks to him, or unity music. This concept of bringing music to a new level, like we see the effect of what's going on in the world out there in the negative, you know, with like, you know, I don't want to say too many of these names, but just someone ending with B, yeah, for example, yeah? yeah. I don't know if you know, but so low, it's so bad, yeah? It's so Hashem Shreina, it's such a uh, opposite of what, you know, we're trying to do. And we have the opportunity to, through music, to go the other way and lift everything up, to lift people up to new connections to that they didn't even know about. And music has a unifying power. Like I said, I saw it live, aid, this unifying experience of souls. And I was like, we got to do that in the Jewish world. We've got to do that in the global world. We've got to figure out how to, as the Jewish people, to do some good PR for a change, you know, instead of what's been going on, you know, like we've got to get the message that everyone can relate to. And, and anyone who disagrees with our message of Amuna and unity and, and, and positive living and elevated living and happy living and happy lives, anyone who disagrees with that, it's because there's something it's not it's not because of us it's because there's something off you know it's and for example say we made a unity event that was one of my dreams and bds came out against it yeah not bsd not for saturday my bds the opposite yeah and i'd say look yes. you're welcome to join this unity event and they say no 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 we're not interested because you're you live in jerusalem and you're jewish or something so i, said, I don't know did you hear what he just said i mean what, what this person said it sounds like they've got a, race, a racial issue. They have. They will expose their lack of unity by not wanting to join what we're trying to do. That's the kind of message that I want to bring. And thank God, working where I've always hasn't had any uh, conflict of interest. Like I'm very loyal. When I work with people, I want to work for them on a real transparent way. Like I don't want to, like you know, on the side I'm doing the unity projects and it doesn't fit with Rav Orish, but you know, I've got my agenda, God forbid. No, my unity projects is together with everything that Rav Orish, there's no contradiction because, for example, one of his main students is, is Listen Black, and that's who I've worked with for years. It's, it's the whole message, the whole energy is, is, thank God, is combining. And every time I go to the Tom the Rebbe and ask him, can I go to Uman or, he's like, you know, if your wife lets, you know, go. Yeah, like, <laughs> you know, it, nice it doesn't contradict you. <laughs> Which oh, the Rebbe? No, no, not Rav Arush. A little oh, bit more on. about the Tolna Rebbe. It's it's Rav Yitzchak Menachem, right? The, the son of the the Rebbe from Montreal. Uh, yeah, Rav Rav Yitzchak Menachem Weinberg Shlita. He is my official, you know, Rebbe um, that I go to from you know my larger life decisions, and he has taken the, a, a lot of his time, and he's given us a lot of support and love, and I pray there as well on the main times. Uh, you know, the Yom Tov and Shabbos, and thank God, you know, he's he's very caring towards our family and a very special person. He interestingly, I have this the merit to be connected to the the CEO of Ami magazine. I've had this in black in the magazine and Rav Orish, and you know, I helped with a few other projects. But uh when he asked me for the Ton the Rebbe, the Ton the Rebbe wasn't interested in being in the Ami magazine. So for me, it's like being around Rav Orish, he wants to get his message out there, yeah? So I'm like, you know, Tom the Rebbe, let's get your message out there. No? He's, and he speaks English as well, and he's a genius. He's, he's not interested, so I'm very happy. And he once came to me this morning. He said, look at this beautiful shul, and this, this, you know, we're all sitting and learning together, about to go pray. I don't need anything else, you know? I, I'm not trying to like... So that you see there's different kinds of neshamas. Rav Orish is cocking, he wants to go and... He, he, he would not sleep on these tours. He literally, we up all night after we'd been till two, three in the morning with everybody, like giving them chizak after the class. It wasn't, it's not just all the preparations, the whole day doing meetings. And then finally we get that little hour before to eat a little bit and daven and then go to the next class, and this big class. And then there's all that Kabbalah's ponim, seeing everyone for another few hours. And then finally we're back at the home, you know, that we're staying at, the, the kind guests. And it's an opportunity to rest a few hours before we need to go to our next place or the next meetings or dub and nates. Always dub and nates. He, I would, if I couldn't sleep, because not because I'm a sadic, because I had, you know, uh, what's it called, jet lag, I would stay up and like talk to my wife. Like one time I had to take Sarah some bills in Israel. It was like we were in Toronto, so it was already morning there. And I was like, 
amazed. I was seeing my voice walking around. And he was praying. He was dominating for all the people that we were with in the day. He was doing a spot. It didn't stop. And same with on the planes and the same on the buses. And, you know, that's his, his light is to get the shamans, to pick up the shamans. And all day he loves seeing people. Every class we now have meetings afterwards. And he's excited to see those people that love him. And he, he can see the connection he has with them, the love and the, the warmth. And, you know, it's, it's, it's unbelievable. And uh, so, but the Tonga River, he has his a different focus, the Kilo around him and then the Shamas around him. And it's a different focus. And they're both great in different ways, you know. And, and it reminds me of the comparison between Avraham Avinu and Yitzchak. Like Avraham is all about yeah. chesed and, you know, going yeah. out and really, it's like it's just stayed and there was totally different uh, energies, more chesed versus gavura, strictness. and 100%. I mean, our tours were always around the Parshas of Rabbi Mavinu, our three-week tours. And I always liked that. I was excited. I, the, to- the, the Torah, the Kriya, yeah. the Parsha is Mo'ora this man. So every year we'd come to Lech Lecha and that's when we went. We went on Noah, <laughs> Lech Lecha, the Yaira, and, you know, and it going ahead, you know, Chai Sara, we'd return back for Chai Sara, and that's already Yitzhak, like you said. Then I'd be back by Tolna again. <laughs> so it was always like, I felt like I was with Avram and Sara, you know, um, Ravorish and his Rabbani. And then I was back with Tolna Rebbe, my, my Rebson, you know. And that was the, the beautiful thing, you know. I, I want to say something to you guys, like just a little bit of chizik, that you, you should understand that Ravorish wants people out there and I know myself like on a hidden level there's a lot of Talmudim who've come there who are no longer there yeah like I don't know if you remember we'll say some names you know it's only to Ellis nothing god forbid no negative speeches people like uh, draw Moshe Kasuto and uh, you know Blazer Brody obviously and there's a long list of Koshiba people that if you go onto the brezlov.co.io and look on the BOD website, all the amount of people there who've given video share in there over the years in English, you'll see there's a Koshiba list and that's only English, there's all the other languages as well and a lot of people have come through there as you yourself did back in the day as well um, and what's beautiful about it is that Rav Oresh is very happy, I mean I heard this from people and it was like a, more of a private chat but I think there's something which you know you guys can get some encouragement from that the real key is with a Sadiq, and this is the same virus, he's a Srimai Zilberberg, who I was by many, many years, and he's a huge Sadiq. And it's like being with a Bidichavan, maybe it's a Bidichavan. I literally was like in another, another world, you know, Srimai Shlita should be Gazan, and we, this kind of energy of like Lishma, where they didn't care about their own most of themselves as much as the message, the, the, the Avoda. So by Rasimai, the Avoda is the most important thing, the holy worship. By Rav Oresh, getting out the, the message of Muna. So if his student's no longer there, it doesn't matter because it's not about the student, it's not about him, it's about a Muna going global. So now Kasuto can bring a Muna to wherever he is in Orlando and you know, Laser Brody's in Ashdod and he's got his Shirim and it doesn't make a difference. Even though on a nefish level, like, well, you know, I'm not getting paid by them anymore, so, you know, blah, blah, blah. All that stuff, you know, the... the the Gashmir's Chesh bonus. But on the spiritual level, on the soul level, it's, be, it's, it's a mission that's beyond the institutes and beyond the pay grade and beyond the rabbi, beyond everything. It's a, it's a mission to get us ready for Mashiach. Like our friend who just who obviously has to go somewhere, like with Chabad. I went to 770 a few times with Nissan. And one of my favorite places to visit now in America is, is the Rebbe's Kever, yeah? The Babcha Rebbe's Kever, Queens. the oil. The oil for me is one of them. I was just mentioning it, uh, your your Heilige Chasidus that the oil, you know, for me is one of the most uplifting places I've ever been to in my life, other than maybe the Koso and you know, but being by Sadiqim here in Israel, Sfat. When I come to Sfat, I get very inspired, and I, I miss being in Sfat. I haven't been there for a while now, um, but the the uh, the oil is just beautiful. I mean, that's one of the first places I'm going to go back to when I go to America, Vienna, if I need to go. I'm going to go to the oil because it's such an amazing place. And 770 as well was very inspiring, you know, seeing the effect they had. We were there for a CT in Shabbos and I had the pleasure to oh, spend and time with... Uh, New York, it was in Times Square, right? Yeah, yeah. So I was the manager then and I was the DJ and I got to hang out with Rabbi Shai's towel the whole Shabbos. I was amazing talking to him. 
I've always been a big fan of him and Y.Y. Jacobson, you know, like I went on tour around Ukraine with Y.Y. Jacobson and just yeah. having the, the ability to spend time with these kind of people, you know, official chef, I'm very inspired by him and I have a lot of people that are influencing me and that, and nowadays, honestly, a lot of non-Jewish podcasts influencing me. Like I, I love listening to these long form podcasts from people like Joe Rogan, you know, obviously yeah. you have to, you know, filter out some of the noise from, you know, the rudeness and stuff, but the, the concepts and the, the conversation and Ben Shapiro, you know, is, you know, he's Jewish, but it's, it's still in about non-Jewish, you know, general politics and other things, or, you know, not so that much that I'm interested in the politics. I'm interested in the, in the, uh, the process of conversation and presenting and the facts and, not not the emotional side of it, right? Not knowing Even what's going on in the world. Yeah, and just understanding, getting clarity of you know what the struggles are nowadays, and then and also with Tim Ferriss and Lewis Howes, and I was a big fan back in the day, Tony Robbins, but not as much these days. Or Oprah, not as much these days. You know, there's the new generation of people that I'm tuning into, and you know, and I feel there's such potential with that. I and mean, even like where I come from in England, there's a few podcasts I'm listening to from like the more like. You know, I grew up like more Cockney, you know, like with the Cockney crowd and more like, you know, the black culture in London. And Grime. I, that was my up. Uh, yeah. That's what really that, is inspiring so I, to I me. Get also. From, like the fact that yeah. you come from such a place and you said you were promoting clubs like nightclubs, right? Yeah. You mean. And now yeah. you're literally promoting Sadiqim, <laughs> like Rav Arush touring with Rav Arush. Yeah, so, by Jacobson, Nissim you, Black. Yeah. I don't usually say this publicly, but if, if you wanted a good title, I haven't done it yet, but you could like have from Pimps and Whores, which is the name of my nightclub, to, you know, Amuna Tour Global, you know? This we is one of the first it. times I've saying some <laughs> We might do that. <laughs> I, I'm someone that would take a risk on that because I know the effect that it could have. Yeah. That's, that's yeah. But that was, that was, I mean, that, that night, my wife was there, my, you know, wife's twin brother, like, like we... That was a monumental night when I had that big success at Pimps and Whores, you know, like in, in London in a, in a mafia not, mafioso nightclub. That was awesome, you know, like for that world. And I feel like that a lot of the prepared you for doing what you're doing now. Yeah, definitely. Like that's the whole idea about tuba. That that's right. something which took me a long time, a process. I I would divide up my life into ten years, like generation, like first ten years, you know, being a little kid experiencing you know london then the second 10 years becoming a teenager and finding myself finding my soulmate finding my purpose finding judaism finding spirituality and then the next 10 years i was sitting literally like in yeshiva shalmaila like i was by Simaya, by siddiquim kadoshim porish from the gashmir so i was completely in another world for 10 years i wasn't online I, only at the end of those that that you know 20 to 30 you know age group that 20 year age group of being married and bringing down the shamas and being around Siddiquim. Only then, that next, this last 10 years, was I back in the world again. And that was the whole key now. How do I bridge everything I was before the first 20 years yeah. during those 10 years of very high avoda? Even though I was working with Bokhrim then, but I was still very high. Like I wasn't online. They put me online as a midnight rabbi. And then this last 10 years of, you know, just building like, you know, so much work experience i worked for corporate america i worked for rehab i did so many different projects i saw what it's like in the you know economy and and how it works in israel and i worked for a, a famous israeli charity called the jaffa institute who have you know places all around israel for four years and while i was there i worked for ashrenu an american program and put on shows this and black's first show was in that program in israel and uh, for him and You know, I was already, I was hanging out with a guy called Shine and there were so many interesting souls that came into my Dalai Lamas, you know, like Why Love and so many interesting people. And, you know, Baruch Hashem, you know, I had, at the same time, I was very close to holy, holy people and it was an interesting bridge. But now I feel like this next 10 years, being now I'm 41 now, and with the coronavirus kicking it off and Purim year, because I'm Purim year though, as you can see on my cup, it says Purim. I don't know if it comes up. But it's a Purim cup, yeah. So the Purim cup the and Purim, yeah. I was born in Purim. So for me, it's a monumental time that Sunny Corona came in. And now, this next 10 years, I think for me, it's about bridging everything now, bringing united souls, bringing unity, globalizing this message, 
bringing musicians global, bringing the Sadiqim, the light of Sadiqim global, everything should go, you know, huge. And you guys are part of that process. You know, we're sitting together doing this podcast. Right now, we're like hitting small numbers, yeah? I mean, our Amuna class gets 30,000 minimum viewers, yeah? So it's not that small, but it's, it's still in the growth process, you know? It's, I don't think it's where it's, sh- where it should remain. I, you have to always push and try and grow and hustle. And you, know, you never know. Like, it, with an honesty. Rav yeah. taught me, and he said that when you're like, when you pray, right? Don't just say, Hashem, give me a wife. Give me a wife like this, like this, like this, like this, like this. Mamash, be very clear with Hashem what you want, right? And why? Because it's Hashem. So whatever you want, he can give it to you. So don't don't just say the simple, I need a wife. No, ask Mamash everything that you need for. So Bizat Hashem, you're the one that's with him all day long. You got to take that and, and I mean, pray that you have. I mean, we have to ask. We have to really ask and we have to push. I mean, one of the things that you have to do it with balance and you have to go with process. You know, that's where all these other podcasts come into play where you have to have a healthy lifestyle and take make sure the family are first and you know, there's steps, like you see behind me, it's steps, like you can't just, you can't just uh, jump up. I did that by Rasimaya. Rasimaya used to talk about Rav Sodek Cohen and how there's nothing that can stop your will, the will of, of a person and the power of Tefillah Kedam for everything, with Ruchnius for sure. You know, this is the kind of energy I got from Rasimaya. But the, the reality is you have to now bring it into your kalim, into your vessels, into your reality. And it's very important to bring it into your everyday life and, t- and be patient with the process. And that's that's the key, that balance, where you have a tremendous rots and a will, but you're also very down to earth and practical. And often if you're blessed with a good soulmate, your, your soulmate will help you with that balancing and guide you to be, you know, real, that you can't just do everything. Like, you know, I, I can't just go tour the world in this and black and forget my family, you know? I can't, you know, be all hours up all night helping souls on the street when I've got my own now teenagers, you know, I've got my own, you know, I've just made a wedding this year already. Can't believe it. Wow. I married off a child, you know, to, to a guy called Nachman, would you believe it? He's a photographer, Nachman Styles. And if you know him, Nachman Goldstein, you know, he's a very good photographer. He's friends with like Schlepping Nachas guys and the, uh-huh. the, that guy you had, the chef a guy, he's friends with him. And um, I saw anyway, Schlepping Nachas funny- after the show with, uh, with Rav Arush. I saw them in Yerushalayim, yeah. and they're like, you have no idea what we just did. I was like, I know what you just did. And he's like, we got Rav Arush to pull out a Nanach Petek. <laughs> that was like, <laughs> that's what they took away from me. <laughs> that clip is, I didn't share it around because so I didn't want it to go too crazy with the Nanach vibe, but bottom line, like, it's, it's out there, and it's unbelievable. Like, it just shows you Rav Arush's heart. That there's nothing everyone. that... Yeah, there's nothing that's puzzle, nothing, everything, like, you know, I used to ask him, you know, these more, like, can, is it okay if there's mixed seating at the events, you know, in Miami and this and that, and like, you know, eight of the things, we need the mechitza, this and that, you know, we try, we do this, that. he was just want to get Amuna to the to the people, that's the, that's the avoider, same, like, I remember with Chabad as well, you know, they have their rules and their boundaries, but it's amazing, the Asay Tov, what they're trying to get done, yeah, and that's what I think that you see the light of Chabad and Breslov, even though I went to Lit Shiva, and even though I connected to mainstream Hasidus, but you see the light of Kirib coming out from Breslov and Chabad. It's awesome, you know? It's, it's an inspiration to everyone else, including the, the Yeshiva Shur Kirib organizations, which it's all changing now anyway. Everyone's working together, you know? Like, uh, we went from Shlomo Katz last week to Aiton Katz. They're two very different lights, even though they're both brothers. Mm-hmm. Um, but it, they work together, you know? Having we have Simon Jacobson sit together with Rav Orish was awesome. I'd love to have Yy Jacobson sit with Rav Orish, but having his brother and Simon Jacobson, or Simon Jacobson, yeah, Simon Jacobson was awesome. Like having him sit there and talk to Rav Orish and see how they went back and forth in Torah, wow. it, it was an amazing class. And Mayor K, you know, an influencer. I'd love. To, I said to Mayor K, I want to bring in some non-Jewish influencers. I want Lewis House. Bring him in. If you've got connection to him, get him to come. Right. I'm, and I'm, Rav Orish will let me. That's the amazing thing. It's not like I'm working for an institute. Now, the question is, with women, that's a more, like, not simple because Breslau is very into Shemir Sanayim. Huh? We have the same thing here. We talked about it when we started the show. Like, okay, women, that's like the, that's like the one thing that we agreed, like, 
it's, for now it's just a no-go because it's just a, it's a matter of comfortable being able to have an hour-long conversation and to laugh and to joke when you have your yeah. wife you know sitting in the other room or my wife sitting at home it's a bit weird but, but yeah it, i mean i was on a an hour i need to get podcast. out there. yeah i was They're on an hour podcast the, the last week doing a, a podcast <laughs> yeah no that's true i do think the women need to get more encouragement in the jewish world to be more uh empowered to get content out because the truth is like my wife she has a, a instagram and she slowly started to put stuff out there in her own pace and, and comfortability and you can see from women it, from my wife for example comes from a lot of yerusha mayim and, and sneers and it's a very like it's a from a very good place where what she's doing um So Baruch Hashem and I, we have full blessings from Rav Oresh, from the Rebbe to do this kind of thing. Um, and I was on a podcast for an hour last week with, with, uh, with a lady from America who I met through, thanks to this whole Corona challenge, I've been in Zoom communities, you know, on a weekly level um, where there's all kinds of people there and people are starting to see my energy and message, thank God. And they want to they wanna host me on their podcast. Someone just tagged me, a really cool like black, black actress who, who tagged me and it's sort of connected to this in black. And like things are linking up. Like there's, there's opportunities to really, to make an impact. And the key is to remember like everything we spoke about till now, that we're grounded with the light of the Sadiqin. That was, that's the key. That we're, and we're, we're grounded with our, as you so beautiful, both of you put, your wives, you know, you have your, these holy weapons that protect us and, and remind us of what life's about, no matter how much we want to go out in the world and do what we're doing. And uh, if we keep that all in, you know, that full universal united experience in a healthy way, then I think we'll be much slip, we'll be successful and, and we'll be part of the process to bring the Mashiach. You know, that's, that's, what a, we're, that's the big goal. I mean... I have a, a question for you because you've expressed how you, you know, you worked in different companies here in Israel. You worked, you did the corporate America, you did all the Gashmi side. And now, Baruch Hashem, Bliyayin yeah. Alai, it looks like things are coming together for you uh, through Ruchaniyut to elevate all the tools that you've gained along that process. I too also worked in different companies, sales, um, executive assistant for CEOs of high techs, different things like that. Yes. And now I find myself in Tzfat, which is Rashi Tevot, Sechim Parnasat Amid. We always need money, right? We always need Parnasat. There's not a lot of work up here. But now I have a, a, a baby that I care so much about, which is this podcast, right? That like I'm so invested in. I want it to be so successful. Um, and I'm really like turned on even more now to learn Torah. And I don't want to go work on some Gashmi company that, you know, that like has nothing to do with Torah. Like, so... What what kind of advice do you have for me? Because I'm really struggling with this right now, recently, um, where I got fired a few weeks ago, right? A month or so ago. And this is this is the result of that getting fired. We started this podcast and I wouldn't be able to do it if it wasn't for that, right? So there's definitely a, a positivity in there. Of course, everything is good from Hashem. But like, what 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 is the message of someone that's so passionate about something but it doesn't necessarily add up financially? It doesn't necessarily, you know, bring the bread home. Is there any advice you have for me? Yeah, there's a lot of advice. I mean, it's, it's, we probably should have a private conversation at some point about it. Like, I'm happy to do that because it, it's something which should be done privately as well because there's always that personal aspect of what, of where you're holding in your career and things like that. But in terms of my own experiences, you know, Nissan Black was... He was one of the people like pounding at my door, like, why are you doing this corporate American thing? Like, just scream to Hashem and get out of this. Yeah, that's what he said to me. He was like, I thought he was crazy. You know, I can't, they're paying me every month for some, so, you know, it's, so it's a job. <laughs> yeah, I have a job. I'm, I'm near my house. I can do it. I was online. And, you know, once in a while I have to go to the office and bake Shemesh at the end of the world. And there's a Dafyomi there and a, a Minka and, You know, there is some ruchnius in these places, you know, uh, and meeting other Jews and working together with other people as well, not just Jews. I often was training a whole crew in Vegas as well, you know, non-Jewish people, and I really connected with them. It was really good fun talking to them and sharing my stories, their stories. It was, you know, there's always opportunities wherever you go, wherever you work for and wherever you end up. But Nissan was like, you got to scream, man. You got to like get to that next level of like doing your mission and, 
like you were saying, being involved with work, but getting paid but for your mission, for spirituality, for, for a larger picture and things. What I would say is practically, as much as that was helpful when this and I did scream and it did work, you know. I literally, I remember I was in my own office. I rented my own space. I could scream as much as I wanted, <laughs> as long as the neighbors didn't knock on the door. And, and screaming to Hashem works, you know, that's what we know from, from when we go out in the tribe, we'll scream out, you know, and say tonight, please God, coming up. While in the Torah, we're going to say, Saka, we're going to scream, and we should scream. That's all the Hasidah, the, the Siddiq can bring down. It's just that night, it's a very important night to scream out to Hashem. Yeah, it's Hashem will answer all your prayers, as you said before. You have to, there's certain times of will. So you really have to put in that work and the prayer. And Ravorish, for example, with his photos, the hours of his photos. Um, for me, I'm not so like, I'm not holding on that six hours and all that. Um, but from where I'm holding, I'd say on a practical level, there's the idea of also building your own brand. And that, that would connect into all the podcast people I mentioned before, Tom Billiou and Lewis Howes and these successful people, even... You know, there's there's one called um, from from a lady. Um, she made her own podcast. Um, I've forgotten her name. I always forget her name for some reason. But if not now, then when? And she got it from Pick Elvis. You know, <laughs> that's how she named her podcast. Yeah. So and she's very successful. That lady. And then then for example, uh, who else? Is I think uh, someone else came in my mind. Oh, Rich Roll. There's a lot of podcasts out there. I don't agree with everything they say, but there's a Nakuda that you're asking on that all these people are, were empowered to build their own brand and to leave the corporate structures and become in their way their own self-employed boss. Like I always have that thing in my head, should I remain self-employed? Like this year hasn't been such a big money maker in the self-employed world because you know the, the booking industry has been you know, mostly online and it hasn't been what it was. So I have to still pay an account and I still have to have my own self-employed account and do all that. What I, my wife and myself, we always discuss it and say, yeah, because we're leaving the door open for blessing. We're, we're creating room for our own ability to, to provide a, a vessel for our own, own message and our own unique purpose in this world. And it's, it's to believe in yourself, to believe that you, this podcast is not just, you know, just a fun side project. This is part of your journey to build your brand. And in the economic world, in the business world, that's very respectful that you're building a brand and it's something which takes investment and a lot of passion and a lot of, uh, you know, time. And it, and as long as your soulmate, your partner in life is agreeable, like me doing this now, this is on my wife's time. Yeah. Usually I'd be around and hanging around the house and helping the kids go to bed eventually and things like that. But she understands that this is important as building our brand. So if it's with your wife and, Together, you're agreeable and you, you know, it's a journey together. So with Shalom bias and, you know, and belief in Imuna in yourself, Rav Sonic says that's even more important in a way. I've already said it as well. He said it in one of our classes that it's even more important you believe in yourself. Even more than Imuna in Hashem. You have to really believe in yourself. And so with Tefillah and with Imuna in yourself, it's not easy. I've had those hard times, honestly, where... I was like, what am I doing? How can I leave corporate? Yeah. But Hashem showed me time and time and again, every time I left something, thank God I wasn't fired so much, but every time I made that choice to move forward, that that place that I left within a year or so disappeared. Like that, that reality wasn't there anyway. It was just a feeling I know like the back of the Yeah. Also, so it's just like mean, this dim. When you mean you, you know? say Amuna in yourself is more important than in Hashem. You mean basically the reason you're probably saying that is because if you don't have emuna in yourself, you cannot have emuna in anyone else or in and sh- Hashem mainly, right? Hundred percent. It has to start there. Yeah, it's like a, it's you like love loving yourself. You cannot love anyone. You have to love yourself. Yeah. yeah. So it's very much to do. People miss that with Judaism. Like I, I did initially when I became bat tshuva, fire learning, davening, like no time for myself. But that's the that's the big mistake bat tshuva make. You have to invest in yourself, and it's not it's not egoist. It's, it's it's not uh it's yeah it's like you speak to like a real wise chabadnik you know as much as they're most nefesh you know like manis friedman or yway jackson you speak to these real or a shy town you know i had this supposed to be involved with my manis friedman over a certain story a video went viral but it was in a not good way and it was 
partly due to me because I videoed different parts of this class and they took a part of it and it was knocking him, yeah? And it was amazing his reaction. His reaction was back to me, I'm totally happy what happened. Keep doing what you're doing. That was his message because in the end, however it works out, like it's always like people like this, they always understand that there's a bigger process going on and that they're part of a larger mission. Yeah. And even if initially it looks not good, it's going to work out. And it did. Yeah, Look, Romanus Freeman is probably the most successful online rabbi in the world now, probably. I think he's literally at the top in terms of even more than Wyatt Jackson in terms of his ability to impact and you know yeah. get on things like he was on that that Peter Sanatello uh, YouTuber thing. I mean that in itself is a whole new reality. There's this whole YouTuber world yeah, where suddenly crazy. some rabbis are getting pulled in. You know that's amazing. Um, YouTubers Can't are coming into uh, Shabbos tables. The next you know? for a big rabbi to come on Joe Rogan's podcast, like uh, Manus Friedman or someone like that, or yeah, Jackson, now, that would be Tim crazy. Tim Ferriss had an interview. 100%. Tim Ferriss had a beautiful, beautiful interview. I recommend to everyone from Rabbi Sachs. Awesome interview. Listen to that interview. Awesome. Tim Ferriss and Rabbi Sachs. Amazing. Rabbi Sachs was the top of communication before he passed away in terms. He, now, the, it, how can I go from Rabbi Sachs to Rabbi C. Meyer Zilberg to, you know, yes, I can. Because thank God I grew up in where I grew up. And I, I love Rabbi Sachs. I love it's an awesome person and I miss him tre tremendously. It's such a loss that we don't have Rabbi Lord Sachs around. He was a communicator, he was a Lord, House of Lords. He was able to get up and, and unify, be a unifying voice. For my mission, my dream was to have this giant event. He was going to be the, the face of the rabbi world for me at that time when I envisioned it. And now he's not here. So, yeah. you, know, you know, in a way, it, what it does, it puts it onto you and me. Well, we've got to step up and be those voices of unity and communication and clarity exactly. and ability to even influence the House of Lords, influence, <laughs> you know, the American uh, politics, influence uh, Israeli politics even, you know, as hard as that might be imagined. But we it's have the ability the to, to do Brazil. <laughs> yes. It's a good sign. Ambassadors of Brazil. Also, these two worlds, because we're our eventually allied to the nation that's literally our mission and that's what we want to do what we all yes. want to like what you're saying with the unity uh projects like and you're you're traveling going everywhere and when i saw the video with peter santanello and all these, these series is like wow this is such a good sign for the times we're living in that this is happening right now that you see these two worlds of the other nations of the world and the jewish people like coming together in a very positive way and uh, yeah, we need a good PR also because we haven't had such good PR. Yeah, if Shlomi would have done that project, yeah, there's a lot of work to do. Wouldn't have taken off if it wasn't for Peter. Like yeah. Shlomi, yeah, Shlomi God reached out them. to Peter, right? But if Shlomi Sions would have done that yeah. by himself with just Ami Magazine, it would never have ever done that. We need both. Yeah, both parts. It never would have been a success. We had Shlomi Sions. I knew, I sensed in him that he was going to be able to be one of these unifiers. I, I, that's why I reached out to me, came to our Muna class. And we thank God we have a connection. And he's, an, he's another person. He's, but it, we are the new generation of influencers in the Jewish world. And we've got to do something about it. And we've got to empower our, uh, I'm trying to empower my children to do it on their level. And to not, you know, to not get caught up with the negative voices, to really believe in our mission and do it and really succeed, you know, to, to, to take your podcast to the next level whatever that means. And I'm happy I'm part of that journey now, really happy. And to just keep believing and generating a lot of good energy and you'll see there'll be miracles that Shem will provide and you'll have everything you need to be able to continue this and grow it. Is that and, Shem? you know, you already told me before we started, it's time to happen on a daily level, please God, you know. That's my next uh, project, which we should end off with. I just want to go because i have to get the kids to bed is united souls i have a book that i'm writing and i want it to be a series i'm already speaking to some publishers and the first book will have to be me exclusively because i need to get my message out my mission get it all out on paper and i've done it thank god i've written an 80 page book for united souls and the point is how does it relate to what we've been talking about because obviously the name but also the message is of the book is to bring unity into our daily practical life that it shouldn't just be theoretical chasidus 
and all the beautiful books behind you should not just be theoretical. It has to impact our daily life. Like as the Chabad Rebbe said, what's the Ica? No, you tell, tell me, my friend. Yeah. Excellent. What's the main thing? Yeah. Maisa. Yeah. Maisa yeah. Ica. This is it. We've got to make it. Bring it into our reality. Bring it into your how you make a living. Bring it into your Shalom bias. Bring it into your relationship with your children. Bring it into Svat, wherever you are. Bring it into Jerusalem, you know, bring it into the Corona challenge. Everything has. I like the way Heidi said Corona Torah challenge. I love that. <laughs> yeah, I don't call it crisis. It's a challenge. It's just an opportunity. And it's been an amazing it's opportunity. I've written a book. I never, I never had time to write a book. I took, thank God, one of the Zoom communities I'm part of that I never would have been on because I've been traveling and busy booking events. So I was in this opportunity to hear from writers of books and they, I got inspiration from them and I started night after night. My wife was falling asleep next to me and I'd be writing a book night after night. And I, you know, paragraph to paragraph and you end up with a book. Everyone it wasn't has like I this. had to like, yeah, well, <laughs> exactly. This is what, we wouldn't, I wouldn't be doing these middle classes, you know, and they've been amazing, even better than our trips in a way. We, I think in some ways, you know, we're impacting more even if we're not in front of people, but having the weekly structure of a class with famous people coming in and inspirational people and, and new people, new talents. We've had some new musicians that people don't know so much about and they get the opportunity to perform in front of a larger crowd than Joseph they would otherwise. And it's amazing. Joseph Daniel, you know, D Dolph Halperin, beautiful souls who are very talented, and, you know, and they should be known about. And, you know, more, more than... They, they are and Mordechai Ben Avram and you know Nissan Black of course we brought in Ben Blackwell he's a Hebrew Israelite um, you know all kinds of people have come to our studio Asaf Goren who was in LA I have know, a catcher with Asaf he's, he's, he's a crazy yeah. Jew that, that he's yeah, I love him board. he said he put up a message about who should we vote for in the next election yeah so he put like something like number nine silly yeah like I'm making a joke so I write number 10, Bardak. <laughs> you know who Bardak is. Yeah, I mean, the, the hilarious. <laughs> Just the <slayable. laughs> You got you, you to have some fun. You got to enjoy. A going away message. I know you have to go, but um, what would be your message for, if you could, please, I'm asking you, one for Jews and one for non-Jews. Or for both. For, yeah, for both, for Jews, for non-Jews. That unity is is real. It's it's a flow in our life. There's a unity flow in everything. To see that divine flow, to see that divine flow from within, to see that divine flow in how you process your day, how you make panasa, everything has a flow. It doesn't just come whatever. And you have your ability to access that flow and to be inspirational and to be uplifted and to have energy. And even when you're feeling a bit more or less energized to remind yourself there's a flow and that things are good and Hashem is constantly creating the world again and again and that, that divine flow is going to give me energy that I need to be able to do my mission and to empower others to do their mission and to ultimately do Hashem's larger mission that's the kind of energy we need to approach our day, wake up in the morning and go to bed with, to experience and with our soulmates that we're souls, we're not just husband wife there's a oneness in our relationship. There's a oneness with our children. There's a oneness in this podcast that we're doing this tonight. There's a flow. It's, it's to allow yourself to experience the unity and to allow yourself to, to let go a little bit. You're not in control. It's okay. The corona thing has taught everybody that we're not in control. And then just to experience the divine flow. And that is relevant for a Jew who wants to learn Torah and Daven and connect to Hashem, to someone who wants to keep start keeping Shabbos or we show my bris and shmir sanayim and all the beautiful things that you can do to, to give a good word to someone, a good eye. This is all part of the divine image that we're made in and to, to, to live it. And then the same way with the, the rest of humanity. Everyone in humanity is got made in the divine image and has the ability to tap in in their way to their unique mission and their unique light and to, to believe in themselves as well. And they have, they have beautiful things to do. And the more I meet people with this kind of mindset and even growing up when I didn't know so much but i was brothers and sisters of everybody and to like to to realize that there that we can come to to unit unity in the world we don't have to stay in this exile anymore 
and we don't have to give in to all the divisiveness. I'm writing this book to get rid of this divisive energy out there. That there is a soul level that will unite everybody. Everyone will understand the, the, the language of the soul and that will unite everybody. It won't be any media getting in the way of that message. There won't be any technology getting in the way of that message. The souls are communicating. We're all united. Even if I'm not sitting with you in Sva, I'm with you in Sva. We're, we're, we're united. That's the truth. Amazing. That's it. It's the beauty of technology. Baruch Hashem. We have the opportunity to sit here together tonight and talk to each other and have an awesome podcast. This was awesome. great. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you so Rebbe much. Eliyahu Eliezer. Now you've gone up in my books as Rebbe because I learned a lot from you tonight. <laughs> and uh, and you're for sure in my books, for my personal life, fitting for that title. So, and I really, really want to appreciate it. This has been one of the most inspiring conversations we've had on the, on the podcast so far. And um, I got a lot out of it. I'm definitely going to take you up on that private conversation afterwards. Um, and I think there hopefully is a lot of potential there. Um, even if it's just in, in motivation and, and inspiration. Thank you. I'm not coming as a rabbi, by the way. Like, no, I know that. I know that. I learned from anybody. Yeah. And Ali Goldsmith. That's, that's it. Simple. Our personal learns from everyone. Um, yeah, where can people find uh, your stuff for people watching this? Even though So to connect to me, it's easy. Um, Unity inspires projects. Uh, United Souls is the album and the podcast, the Unity Flow podcast, Relationship Flow podcast, and Amuna is our future Brothers of Israel podcast. They're the three podcasts. And, um, you know, all the other names you heard, Midnight Rabbi, Ellie Goldson, it's all Googleable, and we'll you'll find links from in there. Also. Yeah, please go. <laughs> all right. Thank you right. so much. Really appreciate it. Yeah. And I think we should really just believe in ourselves and get this message out there on all platforms you know yeah don't don't hold back you have an opportunity to post it on another place get it out there even tiktok as silly as it is it deserves a little bit of true content over there you know <laughs> yeah and i uh and uh visit hashem i know we're not musicians but hopefully we can come meet the uh, ravarush soon and uh have a little no we are having uh rabbis especially during sphere and three weeks so there's definitely that option we have my weinberger coming after pesach um, potentially due to Michelle, um, a few other local robotic are interested and might work out. And, uh, you know, and then there's a the few weeks as well. So, you know, there's options and opportunities. And hopefully, if, if it works out, we could do a collaborative project as well. Please go. At the Shem, and if there's any space for two Hasidim instead of two Rabbanim. That's what I mean, with you guys. Yeah. <laughs> collaborative with you guys. Is that sure. Hashem? All about it. collaborations. All about I have a crazy Rav Aru story. I was gonna maybe say it during this, but I'm not gonna say if I, if there's any chance I can meet the Rav again. Um, I know it's easy to meet the Rav. You just go to the Shir. Um, but yeah. uh, if we could ever do anything together, I'm thinking I'm gonna save the story for then, or when you come up to Tzfat and we have you on a sit down properly. That's a shame. I'd love to come to Tzfat. I, I miss it. Very Ask much. permission and, from uh, the wife. That's uh, that's how you work, right? I think the, the key is the wife. I, I think the key is I have to bring the wife will bring me. She's hopefully getting her driving sorted out and we'll go together. And that would be the best way because it she could give me like she'll go shopping or something and I'll come hang out with you guys for half an hour now. Exactly. <laughs> <That's a shame. laughs> right next to Nahum Gamzu. So the Tzadikim literally it's 10 second walk, 10 seconds walk. Wow. Yeah. There's a good rap I put up years ago from Ari Lesser, Gamzula Tova. It's an amazing we were all chewing gum. Yeah, we were all it's chewing gum. Too. Too. He has to sit with the Rav. Yeah. All right, thank you so much. Thank uh, you really very much. It. And uh, Hashem, we'll be in touch soon. And Mazel Tov and your baby, my friend. You should enjoy. Thank you, Mazel Tov. Mazel Tov to enjoy those Yeah, new enjoy the sleepless nights. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I thought they were kind of exaggerating, exaggerating, <laughs> but no, they were under exaggerating. <laughs> Yeah. There's no sleeping Thank anymore, you. but it's okay. It's really now rich. you're the midnight rabbi with the baby. <laughs> <laughs> Passing on the torch. Oh, sure. Thank you so much, Eliyahu Eliezer. Thank you. Tazak. Two chassids and a pod. Three chassids. <laughs> Thank you so much. Chaim. 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 Chaim.